Hello, and welcome to a presentation by Amelia Rector and Ty Tran. In this video, we will be talking about improving the steiner lamis theorem. First, let's go over a few basic definitions and theorems you will need to use. The first definition we are going to go over is what an angle bisector is. An angle bisector is a line that divides an angle in half, meaning if we have angle ABC, the angle bisector will be the line that cuts the angle in half, meaning that angle ABD will equal angle CBD. Next, what we're going to talk about is what an isosceles triangle is. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two sides of equal length, meaning that if we have triangle ABC, side AB will equal side AC. Now what we're going to discuss is an extension on this definition, a theorem that states that if the triangle is isosceles, angle B will equal angle C. First we know that side AB equals side AC because of our definition of an isosceles triangle. Next we're going to draw the line that is the angle bisector of A. We know that because of the definition of an angle bisector, angle BAD must equal angle CAD. And of course, AD equals AD. So by side angle side congruency, triangle ABD must be congruent to triangle ACD, proving that angle B equals angle C. The next thing we're going to talk about is what a parallelogram is. The definition of a parallelogram is a quadrilateral or a four-sided shape with opposite sides being parallel. An extension on this definition is a theorem that on a parallelogram, opposite sides will be equal as well as opposite angles. To prove this, we're going to draw a line from A to C. We know that angle DAC equals angle BCA because of our alternate interior angles of parallel lines. Next we know that angle DCA will equal angle BAC for the same reason. And lastly, we know that AC equals CA. So by angle side angle congruency, we have proven that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And thus side AD must equal side BC as well as side DC equaling side AB and angle D equaling angle B, showing that opposite sides are equal as well as opposite angles on a parallelogram. Now to discuss the theorem in question, the steiner lamis theorem. The steiner lamis theorem states that a triangle with two angle bisectors of equal lengths is isosceles. So in other words, in triangle ABC, if angle ABD equals angle DBC, angle ACE equals angle ECB, and line BD equals line CE, then angle B equals angle C, and therefore triangle ABC is isosceles. Now let's look at our triangle ABC. We want to draw a line BD, which is a line segment of the angle bisector of angle B. We'll also do the same thing to angle C, making CE equal BD. Now we'll label our angles appropriately, labeling angle 1 and angle 1, which are equal because of our angle bisector, and angle 2 and angle 2 because of the same reason. Now let's suppose angle 1 does not equal angle 2. Then either angle 1 is less than angle 2 or angle 1 is greater than angle 2. Let's look and see what happens if angle 1 is less than angle 2. Let's consider triangle BCD and triangle CBE. Since we know that BD equals CE, 
and of course BC equals CB and angle 1 is less than angle 2 as we previously stated. The result is that side CD will be less than side BE. Now let's draw a parallelogram using points B, E, and D extending out to point F. We know that side EF will equal side BD based on what we found earlier using the definition of a parallelogram. And because BD equals CE, we know that EF equals CE as well. Now let's draw a line extending from F to C. We notice that triangle CEF is in an isosceles triangle. And therefore, we know that angle CFE is equal to angle ECF, based on what we found earlier using the definition of an isosceles triangle. Next, let's label our angles 3, 4, and 5. We know that angle 3 plus angle 4 equals angle 2 plus angle 5. We also know that angle 3 equals angle 1 based on what we found earlier using the definition of a parallelogram. By replacing angle 3 with angle 1, we see that angle 1 plus angle 4 equals angle 2 plus angle 5. But remember what we said earlier, that angle 1 is less than angle 2. So in order to satisfy this equation, angle 4 must be greater than angle 5. Now looking at triangle CDF, we see that side CD must be greater than side DF. Now based on what we found earlier using our definition of a parallelogram, we see that side DF must equal side BE. And because of this, we can replace DF with BE and show that side CD must be greater than side BE. But remember earlier that we stated side CD must be less than side BE in order to satisfy that angle 1 is less than angle 2. So what we have here is a contradiction. Next what we want to see is what happens if angle 1 is greater than angle 2. By using the process that we used earlier considering triangle BCD and triangle CBE we'll get that CD must be greater than BE. But by using the process we just used with the parallelogram, we'll show that this is also a contradiction. And therefore, side CD must be equal to side BE. Let's look back at our original triangle, triangle ABC, with angle bisectors of equal lengths. Now recall triangle BCD and triangle CBE. Let's take these triangles apart and look at them separately, labeling them correctly. Remember that line BD equals line CE and that line BC equals CB. But now we've also proven that line CD equals line BE. And so by side 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 congruency, triangle CBE is congruent to triangle BCD, meaning that angle 6 equals angle 7. Now looking back at our original triangle, triangle ABC, let's take our two separate triangles and place them back. Be very careful when labeling and make sure to label correctly. Because we found that angle 6 equals angle 7, this means that triangle ABC must be an isosceles triangle, based on what we found earlier using the definition of an isosceles triangle. Thus proving that a triangle with two angle bisectors of equal lengths is an isosceles triangle. This has been Team Cat with Amelia Rector and Ty Tran 
brought to you by Math 3321 at the University of Texas at Dallas during the spring 2015 semester. I'd like to acknowledge our amazing professor, Dr. Muhammad Akbar, as well as share with you the textbook we use to help prove this theorem, Geometry for College Students by I. Martin Isaacs. I hope this video helped you to understand and appreciate the Steiner-Lamis theorem. Thank you very much.